Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of simple, simple exercises that will help you to apply the straight bow and the greasy elbow work that you've done to your instrument. So what you need is a mirror. That's it. <laughs> All right, the first exercise that I like to do is I like to try to place the tip of the bow with my eyes closed on any given string and open my eyes and see if I got the bow perfectly straight. So I'm going to do the A string. And based on my muscle memory, I think that's straight. Pretty darn good. I'd say that's in the acceptable range. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the D string and I'm gonna try to place it. And I know that I have to reach even further forward on the D string to keep the bow straight, especially for my short arms. And that I think is straight and it is. Now you're not gonna be able to nail it right off the bat like I am. Um, I've practiced it for years. So what you might want to do is you might want to find a straight bow, check in the mirror, and then sit there for a minute, memorize it, feel the extent that your wrist is bent, and then close your eyes, lower your bow, and then with your eyes closed, try to bring it back up to that same position. And then open them and check and see how you did. Same with the G string, with the E string, and you'll start to notice that the D and the G string are much more difficult to get into that position, especially for those of us with short arms. And I just have to mention, if you have really short arms like I do, you're allowed to let go of your pinky while you're doing this exercise at the tip. It'll relieve your wrist a lot. And also, if you're really short, you'll want to play with your violin a little bit more frontally then off to the side. Tall people get the luxury of opening up and playing just nice and open, but shorter people have to bring things more to the front. Okay, so that's exercise number one for finding that straight bow. Now for combining the straight bow and the greasy elbow together, um, you can do this with your eyes open and with your eyes closed, and then you can try to surprise yourself and open your eyes without warning and check how you're doing, but it's just simply the twinkle variation A. And the reason I like that is because it's kind of like fiddling. It's lots of, um, lots of scrubbing back and forth bows, which constitutes fast playing and constitutes a huge loss of control for beginners. So if you can successfully do twinkle variation A, you're gonna carry away a skill that will serve you for a lot of your fast playing needs, whether it's in fiddle or in classical music. Okay, so variation A, I start in the, in the middle of the bow and I'm just gonna master the top half of the bow first. Then if you want to, if you wanna push the limit, you can play this whole variation in the lower half of the bow. That's a great um, application as well. Let's start with the upper half of the bow, and the rhythm is Mississippi hot dog, Mississippi hot dog. So it's back and forth and short, short. But it's not short, short like this. It's short in duration, but it's a big fat bow. That's a high quality short note. Okay, so listen, watch this, watch my greasy elbow, watch my straight bow. Ready, and... save time. Okay, so that's just a fantastically simple exercise that will give you a huge payout. Then you can try it going from frog to middle. I don't think 
realistically, you're going to be need to do that kind of a bow stroke in the lower half of the bow, but it will develop your skills in the lower half of the bow. Now, here's a little warning for you though. I don't have time to teach you all the background skills you need to successfully do this, but I do need to warn you that you, when you play in the lower half of the bow, the shoulder does become involved. And that's not a bad thing. We do need the shoulder to be involved in our mechanics when we're in the lower half of the bow. Um, but for repeated saw strokes, you have to bypass that need and prevent the shoulder from taking over in the lower half of the bow. So you don't want to do this. You don't want to give your shoulder permission to take over. It's kind of like brushing your teeth. And I'm such a nerd that when I brush my teeth, I try to brush them completely with a greasy elbow. I don't, I don't brush with my shoulder. <laughs> and that's actually a good exercise for you to work on and to make use of your tooth brushing time to work on bypassing the shoulder and learn to just move from the elbow when you're in this position. It's very hard to do. So again, watch my shoulder and watch my elbow. My shoulder is moving. It's rolling around in that little socket, but it's not generating the motion. It's not a shoulder motion. It's mostly elbow and wrist. I hesitate to, to tell you that, but I know that many of you are going to step into that trap if I don't mention it now. So there you go with your warning. Good luck to you. And I'll see you in the next video.